Did you know that there are so many bizarre differences between the original book of the Lorax and the 2012 film? For example, throughout the entire book of the Lorax, the only villain that exists in the story and in the Truffle of Forest is Onceler and no one else. He is insensitive and cruel, not caring about anything or anyone just to profit and make as many thneeds as possible. This is quite different from the movie, as there the main villain of the story is O'Hare, the owner of the industry that bottles air for the population of Thneedville. And that's just the first of the 12 differences we're gonna tell you about today. You may not know this, but the book The Lorax was written and released back in the 1970s, and it was so successful. I mean, really successful that Universal made an animated short film less than 30 minutes long a year later. And in this short film, the story is much more faithful to the book, with a wealth of details that clearly highlight the various differences between the book and the 2012 movie. One of the things that is in the book, and this short film shows, or rather, doesn't show, is the face of Wansler. Unlike the movie, where we see both his young face and his face as an old man, after he has destroyed the entire truffle of forest. And there's a reason why Dr. Seuss, who wrote the book but was also an illustrator, didn't put a face on the villain. Dr. Seuss wanted that character to be faceless because he represents all the big corporations that, just like Wansler, have no scruples and will do whatever it takes to earn more and more money. It doesn't matter who they hurt or what the consequences of their actions are. Without a doubt, Ted, the smart boy, is a great protagonist. And in the movie, we have him and the Lorax as the two protagonists. But in the book, the only protagonist is the little orange mustachioed creature himself because, after all, the book and the movie are named after him. In the story of the book, just like in the movie, he is the representative of the forest, sort of a messenger from Mother Nature with the goal of making Wansler stop causing so much pain and suffering to his trees. It's true that in the book there is a boy who listens to the entire story from a lonely old Wansler about how the forest was completely devastated, and he even receives a last truffle seed at the end and is given the mission by Wansler to plant new trees and take care of them, if he cares enough to make the world a better place. But he is never called Ted at any point, let alone being the protagonist of the book. But you know what? Let's just go. Let's go. Forget about it. In the book, the Lorax appears immediately, sort of sprouting from the stump of the first tree cut down by Wansler, almost instantly. <laughs> Quite different from the movie, where some time after Wansler cut down the first tree, there is an event where a surge of energy is expelled from the tree stump after being struck by two lightning bolts from the sky. I have to admit that the 2012 movie version was much cooler, and it kind of reinforces the idea from the book that the Lorax is indeed a messenger from Mother Nature, trying to save his truffle of forest as its legitimate representative. Little did I know that by chopping down that tree, I had just summoned a mystical creature as old as time itself. And now we're gonna tell you a bizarre difference between the book and the movie that I don't think you have any idea about. So if you're enjoying the video, comment down below, hashtag Truffle Up. Another difference between the two works is that there is no city called Thneedville in the book. The truth is that it was created for the movie's storyline. In the movie, the city was founded by Wansler when he moved to the area and opened his Sneed factory. Hence the name of the city. He designed it to be a modern city where people working in the factory would live. It was also a way to promote his product. The city is entirely made of plastic, and its rivers are radioactive? <laughs> of course, this is an irony about the lifestyle after the last tree was cut down. But I wouldn't let my child or younger sibling swim in radioactive water. And since Thneedville doesn't exist, there is no mayor of the city who in this case is the short and greedy O'Hare. He both governs the city and supplies oxygen bottles and canisters to the population. You gotta be kidding me. You really think people are stupid enough to buy this? He does everything to prevent Ted from carrying out his plan to plant a tree because it would harm him and his business. Fortunately, that's what happened in the movie since he was the only one in the city who didn't support the idea because he didn't care about anyone other than himself and his profits. Just like Wansler in the past. Just like the villain O'Hare doesn't exist, several other characters don't either. For example, Audrey, 
the girl that Ted has a crush on, is not in the book. Similarly, Ted's mother and grandmother are not present. The only human characters that appear in the book, besides Wunzler, are his relatives whom he recruits to work in his factory, coming from all over the place. They later leave and abandon Wunzler when the last truffle tree is cut down and the factory stops functioning. Their faces are not shown, just like Wunzler's. Since we're talking about Wunzler's family, we have to mention the differences that the film brings regarding them as well. In the book, the villain is not portrayed as a failure like his mother says in the movie. They are not described in the book, just like Wunzler's origin isn't. But it's Wunzler's relatives who truly assist him in cutting down all the truffle trees, just like in the film. The story features some animals, the bear-like creatures known as barbaloots, the fish that can walk and breathe outside the water, and a bird that in the book resembles a goose. In the film, we see that all the animals leave only after the last truffle is cut down. Even Wunzler's own little horse, Melvin, who is unnamed in the book. In the book, they depart in stages as the truffle trees are cut down and they have no means to survive anymore. This actually makes more sense since they relied on the truffle fruits which were being devastated. The barbaloots are the first to leave, followed by the birds, and lastly, the fish, who depart on foot. Interestingly, in the book, Wunzler himself feels a brief sense of guilt at moments when they have to leave because of him, but it quickly passes when he thinks that if he didn't do it, someone else would have. A truly greedy thought. No, we're not talking about when Wunzler's aunt grabbed the Lorax and made him literally fly away. <laughs> but rather the memorable scene when the Lorax pulls his tail and begins to float toward the sky, departing. The scene is present in both the 2012 film as well as in the 1970s short film. In fact, the 2012 film borrowed the idea from the previous animation since this scene doesn't exist in the book. In the beginning of the book, there is mention of the road on which the Lorax was lifted, but there is no detailed description of the scene itself. And last, but not least, is the final scene of the film. Yes, it was created specifically for the movie. Just like in the film, in the book, the Lorax pulls his small tail after the last tree is cut down and disappears into one of the last places where the sky was still blue amidst all the smoke produced by the Thneed factory. But in the book, the old Wansler, even though remorseful, knows that he will never see the Lorax again. That's because the Lorax would only reappear after truffle seeds had been planted and the truffle trees had grown. The truth is, they took 10 years to sprout, another 10 years to grow, and another 10 years to bear fruit. So that heartfelt and remorseful reunion between Wansler and the Lorax at the end of the film is exclusive to the 2012 movie, which, in a way, was quite nice as it offered redemption for the Wunzler. Although it is a children's story, it cannot be denied that both the writing style of the book and the ending portrayed in the work are quite dark and even pessimistic. That's because there is only one last truffle seed, and it is uncertain whether the little boy who heard Wunzler's story will actually plant and care for it. In other words, the ending is left open-ended, without that beautiful happy ending, you know? In contrast, the ending in the film is completely different as Ted manages to plant the truffle seed with the support of the citizens of Thneedville. At the same time, the Wunzler also takes care of a few truffle seedlings that he planted himself, indicating that in the film, there were probably other seeds in addition to the emotional return of the Lorax. Those were the 12 main differences between the 1970 book and the 2012 film, The Lorax. The truth is, both are really good. But tell us, which difference caught your attention the most and surprised you? Leave your thoughts in the comments so we can find out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated with our upcoming videos. Until next time, bye bye